Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us again. I appreciate all of you who have uh, contacted us uh, through YouTube. And um, those of you that have, uh, on your own, decided to send a tithe, it's a great blessing uh, to both of us. Uh, please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us and that you allow us, Father, to, to learn at the best quality of speed, your speed, not ours. We always want things to go super fast. Father, you know the perfect speed for each and every one of us of our learning and our, our, uh, the, the trials and tribulations that we all must go through at times to benefit our, our daily walk with you and father we thank you for all that you're doing for us in our lives we also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time you know every heart every need every wish every dream every concern and we thank you for not only hearing these prayers but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season also father we we bring before you we pray for dana derek and rachel we ask your Lord that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal in Yeshua's precious holy name. And as always, Father, we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, wherever they are, whatever they are doing. We pray, dear Lord, that, that uh, they have not forsaken thy word and that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And as always, we pray for Israel and our nation, for thy kingdom to come knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders. Every day they're on the front lines helping your children. We pray for their safety, especially in this day and age, and as well as our military who are in arms way or who are about to go into arms way for their safety and speedy return home. And we pray for the lost those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're getting back in our Father's word, and um, we're in the middle of Psalms 10. And we left off with verse 10, but I kind of uh, inadvertently went through verse 10 kind of quickly last week. So I want to reemphasize a couple things about verse 10. Um, we're, we're talking about the wicked, the wicked and the righteous, the, the yin and the yang, the good and the bad. But uh, in verse 10, we're, uh, David's primarily singing and talking about the wicked. And he says, he croucheth, or he crouches, and humbleth himself. Now, what does that mean, he humbleth himself? He appears to others uh, that he is meek and mild, and he humbles himself, and he's on their side, and, and he wants what's best for them. But it's all a lie. It's a ruse. It's fake. And that's why it says that the poor may fall by his strong ones. In other words, he sets people up or tries to, especially the righteous or maybe the weak in spirit, uh, those that have not fully learned and understand our Father and his ways and learn how to be obedient children to God. And uh, he uh, overcomes them. And... Uh, what does that mean by overcome? Well, he causes them to fail. That's his primary function, uh, pulling people away from God, pulling people away from doing what's right. Uh, they're usually miserable wretches, and they want everyone around them to be miserable wretches. And so that's what this is talking about. about. And we continue in verse 11 today with wisdom from our Father. He hath said in his heart, or in his mind, because whenever you read heart, you can also read mind, God hath forgotten. 
Meaning what? God hath forgotten you. God's not listening to your prayers. God's not watching over you. God's not leading you. God's not directing you, they say. He hideth his face. He hides his face from you. He doesn't want to hear from you. He doesn't want to hear your prayers. He will never see it. You see, the wicked think that they have all the answers. You talk to them, and I'll tell you what, they always have a comment or an answer about something, why things are the way they are, why things are behaving the way they are, but they're blind to the truth. And they want everybody around them to be blind. Now think about what they're saying here about God, our Creator, the one who knows all, sees all, hears all. They're saying He doesn't listen. He doesn't, he doesn't help you. He, do, he doesn't forgive you. Uh, so basically what do, are they doing? They're blaspheming is what they're doing. Verse 12, David says, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, lift up your power, forget not the humble. Now, now why do you think David would uh, say this to our Father? What is he doing here? Well, he's doing what Scripture tells us to do. What does Scripture tells us, tell us to do? We are to remind God of his promises. You say, well, why should we or are we to remind God of anything? God knows all, sees all, hears all. Yes, but what does our Father want us to do? He wants us to remind him of what he has told us in his word. Why? Why do you think that is? So that he can be sure that we know what it is. Exactly. You see, uh, a recent example I ran into is that this new position where I'm working, I, I've had to learn new computer skills that I've never, ever thought I'd have to learn. But um, this one particular thing I have to do, I have to make uh, new badges for people, new employees as they come in. And I was able to, uh, after uh, maybe 15 minutes of training, um, able to do this once on my own. And when uh, another person asked me to teach them, they had been there a year and didn't know how to do it. I said, well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I've done it once. Well, when I sat down to train her, I realized I couldn't do it. Uh, you said, well, didn't you already do it? Yeah, but there was a lot of uh, different things I had to do on the computer that I didn't write down. See, I'm the type of person that if I don't write it down step-by-step -step instruction, especially at first, I forget. So, where am I going with this? Is that with our Father, if we are able, or with anyone, if we are able to... Uh, tell them or repeat to our Father of His teachings in His Word, what He has said, then we ourselves have learned it. So in other words, if I was able to sit down and instruct this other person how to do it step by step, then that would have shown them and me that I had learned the process. Well, the same thing with our Father. He wants us to, to be able to sit down and be able to talk and to remind, not only remind God of His promises, but also where we can take the Word of God and we can tell other people about what our Father has said. And that is a great blessing to each and every one of us. And so it shows our Father that we have learned His Word. So that is a great blessing. Verse 13. Wherefore, doth the wicked contend God? Or does the wicked... Why does the wicked despise God? You know. He has said in his heart, that's the wicked says in their heart, thou wilt not require it. In other words, when things go wrong, things go bad... God's not going to investigate it. He's not going to care about what you're going through. He's not. He, you're, you're left on your own to fend for yourself. That's what the wicked think. 
this is what the wicked think, and this is what the wicked try to teach other people, especially if they're weak in spirit. Uh, now, weak in spirit means what? Well, we could even say a milk Christian, sort of. I mean, I realize that uh, a milk Christian basically is a really, I've seen in many cases, a very strong Christian. Why? Because they're new at it and they're exuberant and it's and, and, and it's it's new to them and it's powerful to them and, and God is in control and all this. Yes, they have a lot to learn. However, they're very exuberant in what they're doing. So it seems to me who the wicked really attack are the ones who've been a Christian for a while. You know, and, and it's not all new to them now. You say, well, shouldn't they be stronger? Uh, there's there's the word, should be stronger. We're going to get in today, I, I pray, in, in uh, the coming uh, Psalms, of how people, after they become godly, turn, and all of a sudden they're, they're as bad or maybe even worse than they used to be. And David, and I'm sure our father, gets very frustrated. I don't know about you. Have you ever gotten frustrated with the way things are going? Uh, or better said, the way things aren't going the way they should be? Of course we do. So, verse 14 says, Thou, meaning our Father, David saying, hast seen it. You, you've seen the good, the bad, the ugly. For thou beholdest mischief and spite. When? Whenever it occurs. Now, we, we've made, uh, or I've made a statement before, and I believe a lot of you have read this, that where God cannot look upon sin. Well, he's so holy, yes, but who can look upon sin? Christ. Christ Jesus. Everybody else. That's right. <laughs> Christ. Spirit, all the angels. That's right. Everybody here. That's right. That's right. And that doesn't mean he doesn't know what's going on just because he's not looking at it. Exactly. I mean, uh, yeah. it's like he's got his generals out there, you know, dealing dealing with. Uh, but he sees it himself. I mean, it's all one. Yeah. It's really when it comes down to it, especially through the Holy Spirit, it's all one. He's not got it in his presence, but he knows it's there. That's right. And he knows it's there since the very first earth age. Yeah. So behold, it's mischief and spite to requite it. That means to repay it mm -hmm. with thy hand, his power. The poor committeth himself unto thee. What, what is this poor? What is this poor that he's talking about here? Poor in what? Spirit? Well... I would say in a weakness. The, All weakness. The 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 um, the um, the not well learned and instructed yet. But you know what? Couldn't what? It, couldn't it be even those that are? I mean, when they have those moments. Ah, that's it. See. Those that aren't that strong. We get. We all. All of us get to a point. In our lives, in our lifetimes, maybe more than we'd like to admit, we just get tired of it. Not tired of God, but tired of all the evil. Well, I'll use that term instead of another term. Yeah, that's going on. You know. And it keeps dragging at us, keeps pulling at us. It makes, it makes you not want to be very Christian-like sometimes. Yeah. But that's why it says, The poor committeth himself or themselves unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Who's the fatherless? That means orphan? Kim. But spiritually, what is this fatherless is he, is he talking about? You don't, you're not sure who your father is or... And you're not following. You, right. you feel you feel alone. Yeah. You know you feel. And I'm not talking a, a a fleshly mother and father. I'm talking about in spirit at times. If you're not careful, you can feel alone. And that's what he's talking about here. 
That's why it's important. Listen. Verse 15, break thou the arm, or break the strength. That's what it means. Break thou the strength of the wicked and the evil man. Those that are perpetual evil. Break their power. Break, break, break the power that they try to use against your children. Seek out his wickedness. Hear this. Till thou find none. Now, what does that mean? When is there going to be no evil ever? After the judgment day. After judgment and after the millennial period. That's now think about day. that. Even during the millennial period, yeah. there's going to be evil. Yeah. Even though Satan is locked away and all those cronies with him. How do we know this? Because at the end of the millennium, there's still going to be people that will jump on his bandwagon, which means they haven't turned at all. That's why it says also in the book of Revelation about, um, what is it, every 30 days that we will come together and eat from the fruit of the tree. You know, now Murray says, well, that's so you don't get bored. And this, I, I, for the life of me, I, and I can't see how in the world you could ever get bored in the kingdom of God, but that's his teachings. He knows the truth now for sure. But this is, basically, this is, Lord, keep working at it. Keep, keep dealing with, I can see David saying, you know, I, I can see how frustrated you are, Father. You know, and I, I can relate to that because of our own nature of trying to do what's right and then <coughs> dealing with the negatives, negative. Every day of our lives, there's negatives on this planet, and we've got to deal with it. All 70, 80, 90 years of it. Or whatever it is. And God's been here for how long? <laughs> a lot longer, longer than that. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, he has no beginning, right. and he has no end. Verse 16, the Lord is king. Mm. Now think about who's saying this. Yeah. David. Yeah. He's the king of Israel, right? No. No. Mm. He knows who yeah. the true king is. Yeah. You know? And that's who he looks to. Yeah. And that's who we need to look to. Now, I don't care how big a shot you think you are. Mm. If, you, if you think you're more powerful than your father... Mm then you're, you're in a heap of hurt, and you're going to go through a life of, of misery, as a matter of fact, until you learn the truth. And that's the way it should be, which we'll get into in a moment. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Now, has this happened yet? Where is his land? Wherever he is. He owns it all. But eventually... See, this, this is our goal that we're, stri we're striving to get to. We want to get to the eternal kingdom of God where we don't have to deal with the negatives anymore. Why? Because there won't be any negatives. It's, it's really hard to conceive that. I can understand that, being in flesh bodies and the way things are going, but eventually there's not going to be no evil of any kind. There's not going to be any iniquity, no sin of any kind. Now, what does that also do? It should raise a red flag for some of us if we're doing evil. If we're still uh, dealing in our own lives of sin, we've got to get that out of our systems. And it will take our Father, His blessings in our lives, to teach us, lead us, guide us, and direct us on how to do that. You know, And it just depends on your situation. Verse 17. Lord... Thou hast heard the desire or the petition of the humble. That means humble before you. Thou wilt, not maybe, thou wilt prepare their heart. That means they're a work in progress. We all are a work in progress. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. And, and the thing is, he keeps working with us. That's the important thing. When He knows we're going to fail. I mean, we know we're going to fail. But the thing is, we don't have to stay in that kind of reality if we're in. See, some people, 
I believe what happens is that they want to do what's right, they want to do what's good, and they do, but then for whatever reason, whatever happens in their life, they fail at it. They, they, they let God down. And the, the, the meaningful thing I want to impress here is that when that happens, you need to, oh, I'm not going to tell you how to feel, but the thing is, when you come to the point when that happens, you feel really remorseful and you feel in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind that you let God down and whoever else you did, you're on the right track. See, now that doesn't mean just because you fail, you're a lost cause. How do we know that? Because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Christ of lost causes. And the fact is, he wants us to be able to go to him and say, Lord, be honest with him. Lord, I blew it. I, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to say this. Or whatever the situation is, the sin, the negative. But then that heart in you, that, 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 that Christ, that spirit that be within you wants you to change. And you want that change. You cry out to him for that change. Guess what happens? You eventually learn to change. And it gets better and better and better while the world is getting worse and worse and worse. You're completely going in opposite directions from the world. You know, and that's when you start learning these things. That's when you start realizing, hey, it doesn't have to be this way. I don't have to be a glass half full. I can be a glass or half empty. I can be a glass half full. Uh, verse what, 18? <laughs> to judge the fatherless, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed. Who's the fatherless? Those without father. That's exactly what it means. We mean they're living without God? That's exactly what it means. That the man of the earth those living with earthly values and morals and precepts may no more oppress. And that's what David's praying for. That the war now think about what's happening in today's world right now. There are so many people, just hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, that are just confused, they're worried, they're frustrated. Some are heartbroken. I mean, it's all, all these negative things that are happening to them. That it doesn't have to be that way. Now, that doesn't mean that some of them may not get laid off, or some of them may not lose a loved one, or something like that. But with God, you are able to overcome any obstacle that happens in this world. Any obstacle at all. And we, because we all face, eventually, the same kind of dealings in life with people and our loved ones and even strangers. And the fact is, how we deal with that means everything to our Father. Because our Father takes a personal interest in our lives. How do I know that? Because he created us. He didn't create us to fail. He created us because he wanted us to be in his family forever. Not, not, not just for, as Ross said earlier, 80, 90 years. He wants us to be in his family forever. However, there's certain conditions to meet to be able to do that. And he's given us these conditions in his word. How? By other people, what they've done against him and what they've done for him and with him and by him and through him. So in Psalms 11, he continues, In the Lord, in the Lord put I my trust. Now think about all the people David had around him. He had all kinds of counselors. 
and all kinds of elders and all kinds of priests and all kinds of prophets, but he put his trust only in one person, and that's the Lord. Now, those are easy words to say, but do you? Because let me, let me tell you, if you truly put all your trust in the Lord, what do you got to worry about? Nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. No. Now, do we worry at times? Sometimes. Okay. But are we putting our full trust in the Lord when we're worrying? I think you have to draw like a line of demarcation between concern and worry. Because you can be concerned about something, but not where you're worrying and beating your I head. I did not use the, the word concern. I know, but I'm saying, shouldn't we, as Christians, learn to draw that line? We can be concerned about something. In other words, take it to the Lord in prayer and, and such, you know, that kind of thing. But not be well, worried. Well, I'll be perfect. I'll, I understand faith. where you're going with this, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think when you fully learn it, you're not going to be concerned because concern is doubt. I know you don't know about that, but well, that's what you said. It's it's easy to say. Yeah, and it's another thing to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there are going to be moments in this place. Well, I'm not saying we don't go through that. Yeah. Oh no, no. How no, long no. you sit there is the demarcation line. Thank you. Yeah. Is it a second or two? Well, it's just. Uh, never mind. I know who's got this. That's covered. right. It's just like sinning. Yeah. Yes. We well, think about sin it. falls short of the glory of God. However. We don't stay there. Right. We quickly, and as we learn it, quicker repent of it. Right. Yeah. That was better said. How, yeah. quicker, how quick you get back on the no worry track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It might be a few seconds. It might be a few. Some can you imagine? Their lives there. Now think about that. Can you imagine how relieving that is? Yeah. I mean, the pressure's off. Yeah. The pressure's gone. But the world, see, the world... And especially the wicked want you to be under pressure. How All long? The time. Continuously. Constantly. In That's fear. what's happening in the world right now. Everything that you hear, I'd say 99.99% of it is all negative. Chicken little. It's all yeah. negative. And if negative isn't happening, they make it up. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is. Yeah. They create it out of nothing. Yeah. Just to keep the pot stirred. Just to keep the, the water boiling, yeah. to use metaphors. Yeah. To try to keep people in, in, in confusion and doubt and worry and frustration. That's not of God. But you see, with God, when as, uh, as David says, that's where I'm going to put my trust in. Right. Oh, now think of all the negative things that happened to David, even mm -hmm. after he became king. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but he's saying... Hey, I'm putting my trust in God. That's why it says in this next part of this first verse, How say ye, these are his, his cohorts, How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. Now, <laughs> I did some research on this. Basically, they wanted David to flee from his mountain, from his stronghold. <laughs> and they compare him to a fearful, fleeing little bird. However, David trusted in the Lord for protection. Yeah. So it didn't matter all the stuff going on around him. Now, now remember Beersheba. And, and the fact is what he had done and what he had committed, which was, which was basically a, a death... Uh, uh, um, capital crime. Capital crime, thank yeah. you. Yeah. But what did he do after he was confronted with it by the prophet? He confessed to God and he repented to God. And he was serious about it. You know. But let's, let's face it, and I keep going to Solomon, but Solomon was, other than Christ, was the wisest person to ever walk this planet. And the fact is, he even blew it. So we have hope. And the, the, not hope through Solomon, not hope through David, but hope through Jesus Christ. Because to him is the one we 
we repent to our Father in Jesus Christ's name, it's because of the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. So, in verse 2 it says, For lo, the wicked, back on that wicked. Now, when we're talking about wicked, who, who are we talking about? Just people who occasionally sin? No, we're talking about habitual sinners. Those that want to pull God's children away from God. Are there any people doing that today? Everywhere. Including a lot of some of these churches that are still open. You say, well, how in the world are they pulling, pulling people away from God? The true God. If they're teaching you to fly to save your soul, they're teaching you to worship the first entity who appears on this planet. And it is written very clearly in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that the son of perdition will be standing in the temple of God claiming that he is God before the true Christ returns. So, what do you believe? Do you believe the word? Or do you believe man? So, For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily or in darkness shoot at the upright in heart. That's their goal is to bring down, this is a metaphor, to bring down those that want to do what's right. Now think about what's happening today. All the negative stuff, if you watch it, if you hear it, what does that do? You're spending all your time thinking on negative. Negative, negative, negative. The magazine in there, I won't, I won't bring out its name today, but it's talking about all this. Well, it's got two, three, four-page articles of negative, 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 down there at the very bottom, but the Lord is in charge. Yeah. You know, well, how about the Lord's in charge, the Lord's in charge, the Lord's in charge, the Lord's in charge, don't worry about this negative. So you see the difference? You get people's thinking, you know, thinking about negative. You know, negative this, negative that, negative this, killings, rioting, this, blah, 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 blah. and that's all you're hearing. And guess what? You change the channel, ain't no different anywhere else. We're doing the same thing. So you've got to pick and choose what you want to listen to. You know what I've heard a lot of people doing? They're just turning it off anymore. Because they're just tired of it. They're just turning it off. Now, are we supposed to do that? You gotta have your eyes open. I, well, how can you have your eyes open if you gotta turn off? Well, if you gotta turn Other it sources. on, it doesn't mean that your eyes are open even then. Well, that's true. But we're supposed to be watchmen, all right? Well, what does that mean? Watching? You don't really need a news program. You don't need a news no. program. You what can is it? watch what's going on on the earth today, in the nations, and the peoples, and the in the just well, walk out your door. The how climate. Do you, how do you how do you know? Just walk out because your door. Because it's written. Door. You don't, you don't know what's happening. There. It's written. I've seen it. Oh, I know it's written. You can you've see seen, it. You've seen uh, what's happening in Israel, walking out your door today? Yeah. How, how did you see what happened in Israel today? I didn't even have to walk out the door. <laughs> I saw it on the, on the news channel. Well, that's my point. See, there's nothing wrong with the news. We ought no. to know the enemy. We are to know and we are to pick that's, through. That's why I click on a channel once in a while to see what the enemy's up to. Mm -hmm. That's right. Stupid. That's what I'm talking but you're not, about. Just no. in that that's you're, not, no. you're not allowing all the negatives I go to, work. to come and see. It's like, it's like somebody telling me that, well, I stopped watching all the news. To me, that what they're saying is I'm burying my head in the sand. In other words, I don't want to hear it anymore. No, I understand that. I really do. However... I'm sorry? Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Another metaphor. Mm. But the point being is, is that if we don't focus mm. on truth, like what Beck was saying, you get your truth from the Word. Mm. So, the news that we hear, if it's trying to pull us away from truth, because we know the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So, knowing the truth, when we watch what we watch to get information and it pull, tries to pull us away from truth, guess what? Godly discernment will lead guided 
and direct us of what to watch, when to watch, and what not to watch. And also to know that it's been foretold. Yeah. All the things Absolutely. That and that's what Beck was exactly. talking about. About it's written, it was foretold, this is what's going to happen, right? That's what is happening. And that is what's happening. I'm, I'm just watching a rerun. <laughs> yeah. Basically. You know, basically the news wants to make you afraid. Yeah. It wants to focus on whatever their political bent is and villainize whoever they feel like villainizing. So you have to kind of weed through and figure out what is news and what really isn't. Right. And the 90% of it, maybe higher than that, is not news, it's opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. So, but if you catch reports from overseas and from here and from there, I'm telling you, it's Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's going on now. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're 100% correct. Uh, verse 3. If the foundations, now this word foundations in the manuscript is also written, if the truth, mm -hmm. if the truth be destroyed, if the, your foundation, your godly foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, the question is, how can the truth be destroyed? It can't. It can't be destroyed. But you in your mind can destroy the truth. Yeah. By just what we were just now talking we about, instead of discerning what's going on, you take it all in. Or believe it. Well, that means take it all in. In other words, you, you well, goodness, we're doomed. You, you know, know. So we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make you it. Allow your foundation yes. to be destroyed. In right. other words, you turn away from, from the, the truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You turn from the exactly. truth. That's right. And we all have that opportunity if we want, or capability, or whatever you want to call it. You know, you if know. you're standing there, and, and, and I've experienced this along with everybody else, they'll say something that'll strike fear in my heart for just a moment, and then I'll think, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we were told this was going to happen. Oh, yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know. He said, I told you all things. See, we know. We're, we're talking about the wicked here, but let's not forget who's running the wicked mm -hmm. bandwagon. Oh, if I hear that once day, I hear it ten times and a day. The thing <laughs> is, and the thing is, he, he is so subtle. Uh, mm -hmm. So not subtle. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what oh, I'm yeah. reminded of when I think of now. this now? I'm reminded of this where Satan is talking to Eve and, he, and Satan says to her, he says, God said I shouldn't do this and, and Satan says, oh, surely he won't kill you. He says, surely you won't die. Surely you won't die. Yeah. And he points to the goodness of God afterward. And, and that one <laughs> that little... Soulless. Is mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's that subtlety you're talking about. That's it. And, and that is what our Father wants us to learn. He wants us to learn just the, the least little things that can get in mm. to cause us to start thinking differently. Away from God. Away. See, that's... Why do you think... Think about this. Why do you think He created, not for Him, but for us, the Sabbath? For us to rest and catch our breath from the world. Mm -hmm. And what are we supposed to be doing? On Thinking the about him. <laughs> well, exactly what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be in a group or whether it be by ourselves, we're we're not really by ourselves. You got the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. So there's three or more at that moment, mm -hmm. wherever you are, as long as you got the Word. Mm -hmm. And 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 the fact is, He gave us a specific commandment in the very beginning. Mm -hmm to do this because he knows what would happen in the world ahead of Adam and Eve and everybody else. And sure enough, here we are. And the thing is, we need that rest in him. If not, if we forsake that, guess what? Our foundations can be destroyed. So that's why it says in verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's 
throne is in heaven. Where, where is the Lord's throne? Wherever the Lord is. When he comes here, guess where the Lord's throne is going to be? Here. Because the Lord will be here. His eyes behold. In other words, remember what David was talking about, what the wicked was saying. He, the Lord don't see. He doesn't. No, he's, he wink, wink, you nod, nod. You know, he he doesn't really. He's too holy. He doesn't. He doesn't take God personal. Doesn't, God doesn't mind. You know, he, he understands. It, it's just a white lie. It's mm -hmm. just a. It's just a little thing. Yeah. It, you know, not before God. It isn't. His eyes behold, his eyelids try. What does that mean? Even when he blinks, he knows. He does. He's, he sees everything. The children of men. Verse 5. The Lord, hear this, the Lord trieth the righteous. What does that mean? He put trials in our lives. Why? To strengthen us. If we've got a weak link or links in our lives... In other words, something that we need to work on. We may not even know it. We may not even acknowledge it to God. But God knows. And if it's there, guess what he's going to do? He's going to put it right in your face. You're going to go through it. You're going to go through the trial. Whether you like it or not, you're going to go through it. And guess what? By a raise of hands, who loves going through trials? <laughs> You know, we're supposed to. In other words, we're supposed to realize, Lord, I got a weak link here. Thank you for showing it to me. But we don't say that, do we? Say, oh, Lord, I got to deal with this. You know, but we do deal with it, and we are stronger for it every single time, especially when we learn how to overcome the negative in our lives. And I don't care what it is. You know, if you've got a negative, if, you, if you've got something that Satan can use when he gets here to cause you to fall short, guess what our Father's going to do? He's going to deal directly with your heart, directly with your mind, directly with your soul on how to deal with that because he does not want you to fail. Now, it's up to you to deal with it. I mean, you got to be the one to go through the trial. But that's what it means here. The Lord trieth the righteous. That means those that are doing right. What that also tells us, I don't care how right you think you are, you still got some work to do. And I believe, I, I could be wrong on this one. I, I'll just say it. It's just a personal belief of mine. I believe when you truly get this and get through it all, he brings you home. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's just hypothetical thinking. Or if you can't get through it, maybe he brings you home. No, I think because there are some. No, I'm talking. To, I'm, knows. No, I'm not talking about those that are weak and mm -hmm. and, and and are talking about the lucky. If you're lucky, that's lucky, what happens. Lucky, mm -hmm. blessed. I would call okay. it. Okay, <laughs> we'll call it blessed. The Lord trieth the righteous, but uh, and I can't prove what I just said. No, uh, it's no. just a hypothetical right. conversation. But the wicked. And him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. What? God hates something? Absolutely. He hates, he hates sin. He doesn't want sin in the eternity. Guess what? Sin ain't going to be in the eternity. You know, we were talking about Jacob and Esau. Where he hated Esau while he's yet in the womb. God does hate, but he hates sin. Why shouldn't he hate sin? You should hate sin. He said, well, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're sinning, you should. You should enough to get out of it. But see, Father doesn't want to stay there with his children. He wants them to overcome the sinful nature. That's why he says in verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares fire and brimstone and horrible tempest storms you know a person who's constantly going through a storm in life I mean fighting fire after fire after fire after fire after every day of their life you know it seems like one negative bummer after another 
Well, guess what? They need work in their life. They need to overcome the adversity that's causing those fires to be there. Well, couldn't those fires possibly also be part of the uh, the trial, the, the trial of the righteous? No, this is the wicked we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Upon the wicked he okay. shall reign. In other words, Father, what does it mean God created the fire and the brimstone and all the negatives? No, what he what does he do when it, this happens? He removes his covering. That's all he has to do. That's all he has to do. Let the world let the world have it. They want the world. They want to live in the world. They want to be part of the world. They want to behave like the world. Let the world have them. Because what does Father know? That they're not going to be happy in the world. They're constantly going to be trying to fill their lives with all kinds of things. And, and prayerfully, they'll get back to God. That's what I was going to say. Couldn't that, the trials be, it says upon the wicked, but the wicked can also repent and... Of course, and that's the whole point of all this, mm -hmm. is to get the wicked to repent. How much fire is it going to take, though? That's why it says, this shall be the portion of their cup. Not all of it, but a portion of their cup. In other words, yeah, they could go through life and this and that and the other and, and uh, a mildness, but guess what? They're going to be constantly be going back to the negatives as long as they're having yep. sin and being wicked. And let's not forget the, uh, the title here, Upon the Wicked. He shall reign. Yeah. Upon the wicked, the Lord will remove his covering and let the world have them. Yeah. And when we're talking about the world, who are we talking about? Satan. Satan, hey. Satan don't deal with a lot of people. You know why? He doesn't have to anymore. Because he already had them in their back pocket. Or his back pocket. And they're, look at what's, well, look what people are doing. It's, it's insane what people are doing these days. Mm -hmm. You know, don't tell me they're following God. That's why in verse 7, for the righteous, notice he was with the wicked, now he's with the righteous. For the righteous, Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. What does this mean? Father loves to love. He's love. He's, he's just pure He's, he's a love that, honestly, I don't think any one of us has fully received yet. And we're, we won't until the eternity or when we get before his presence. <clears throat> Everyone, I don't know if you guys believe in life after death, you know, basically where people have died and they've, they've supposedly gone to the Lord and then have come back. But every single one of them that has said this, and there's been thousands of them, maybe hundreds, that have all said one thing, that when they were standing before the Lord, that they felt nothing but pure love. And they didn't and they, want to leave. And they did not <laughs> want to come back. Yeah. Yeah. But, different, different. <clears throat> well, I'm almost out of time, but I really want to start for, uh, Psalm 12. The, to the chief musician upon Shemaneth. Uh, this is, again, the eighth note, the lower note. And this is what I was talking about, and, and I'll just premise this, is that in life, we, 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 we try the best we can to walk a righteous <coughs> life, or a right life compared to our Father and His teachings. <clears throat> and the longer you walk in that, you're also daily dealing with all the negatives that we've been talking about. Well, guess what? We're still in the flesh. As much as we want to do what's right, we still, we're still in these flesh bodies. And every once in a while, and this is what David's going to show here, every once in a while we just get tired of it. We get tired of the not, not dealing with God, but we get tired of all the negative. And we come to learn, unfortunately, those that maybe we look favorably towards, <coughs> turns out, that they weren't as close to walking with the Lord as we thought they were. And I think this mm -hmm. is where David's coming oh, yeah. from on this one. Mm -hmm. That's why it says in Psalms 12, verse 1, 
help. Actually, the word in the manuscript says save. Save, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. What is David saying here? Looks like At this point, any good. no, yeah, that, that, for no one is faithful anymore, Lord. Nobody. You know, and I don't know about you, but I've I've felt this emotion before. I didn't want to, and I guess it was a poor me baby moment. Are you talking about the why bother? <sighs> Sometimes, What's and I'll be perfectly point? honest with you. In the past, and I've had to repent over this, but in the past, I've said to the Lord, Lord, why keep teaching? What's the point? Not, huh? Not getting through. Well, I, I can't remember exact all the things, but it was it was all negative. Yeah. And it was really it was me. It was, you it was, know. It was you. It was me. How <laughs> it was he was looking at things. How I was looking at things, you know. And and the Lord, thankfully, by His holy merciful hand, got through. And says, "Who in the world do you think you are?" You got problems, you know. <laughs> you got problems, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, we we jest at that, but the fact is, when you're in that emotion, and we all get there. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say right now. We've all been there, and we all may get there again. I don't know. Prayerfully not. But the thing is, where David's coming from, he's just tired of it all. Of all. And I'll use the term as we use today, all the BS. You're just tired of it. Well, isn't this a comparison of, you know, the the <coughs> faithful fell from among the children of men, meaning that, you know, they're not getting through to the wicked. They're just not being heard. They're the not being listen. believed. You know, so, which is the same as God, yeah. you know. Yeah. And God will even say, "Okay, fine," yeah. and see, gonna say. Yeah. and take his covering off. Right? But we are made in the image of God. Right. That's where he's going with. But also, what I want, I feel very strongly to establish here, and we're going to have to end here today, is that our Father realizes, especially since Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that. Mankind is so frail. And as much as we, and when I say mankind, this is genderless. And we all so want to do what's right before God. We want to please Him. We want to please our brothers and sisters. We want to be there for each other as much as we can. But after a while, in dealing with negative, you can become negative yourself if you're not careful even if it's only for a moment you know you're saying you know what what good am I doing you know why do I why 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 aren't people listening you know I was talking to someone that you know very well um, uh, last week and uh, this person was very emotional, very emotional about wanting to bring the truth forward to the masses. And it's hard to deal with a person in that state when you realize actually they're correct in the emotion that they feel. However, you can't deal with people in that emotional state when they're not being very level-headed and clear-minded at that point. You you deal with situations like that all the time. Yeah. Where where you know we 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 want everyone to be on the bandwagon of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and a lot of people say that they are. But according to our Father's Word, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Why? Why? There's one reason. Because they have not for themselves studied, studied the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit of God Himself to lead, guide, direct, and to teach them. I could sit here for years on end speaking the words of God, but it is our Father who teaches you. He's the one that opens the eyes, opens the ears, opens the heart to receive the blessings. See, I've always said I've got the easiest job. All I do is repeat the words. Yeah. He's the one that does all the work. He's the one that brings all the blessings forward. To him gets all the glory. You know. So, we'll end here today, but I don't want to end on a negative note. However, this is next week, this is where we're we're going to be getting into this this negative emotion that can exist in a person's life. And like what Shane said in apropos is that you get frustrated when you're trying to teach others and they just don't want to hear it. <laughs> Any questions what we covered today or let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings you you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over and we owe it all to you. I pray for everyone here today and all those on YouTube and all our families that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen.